I'm pretty excited about this video because I'm going to show you a yard that's been neglected for years that's got tons of weeds in it and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do to this yard. It's actually going to be two different videos come from this yard. So, so in this video I'm going to show you what I'm dealing with. I'm going to tell you the plan. Okay, I'm going to talk to you about the weeds we see, tell you about the time of year, what we're going to do to transform it and there's going to be a separate video where I'm going to try to do a start to finish transformation and actually execute the plan that I'm discussing in this video. Today's video is sponsored by Graham Spray Equipment. This is my 400 gallons Graham Spray Rig. If you need a spray rig for your business, go check them out at GrahamSC.com or you can give them a call. If you're close enough, go by and talk to them in person in Douglasville, Georgia. So here's the situation. I've been taking care of the neighbor's lawn for years. Got it looking good. And I've always noticed this lawn. I was like, yeah, I guess they just don't, you know, do a lot with their yard. Well, they finally called me. This lady says, hey, you were recommended to us by two different people. And uh, she called, but she called in the middle of summer. Well, that's a very difficult time to start for a weed control in a yard. I personally would love to start in the fall or in the winter time because in the fall you're getting close to a lot of these weeds dying out and you can put your fall pre-emergent and keep a lot of the cool season weeds out and then you can start hammering on some of the grassy weeds over the winter and just get a, a fresh start. But in the summertime, sometimes I'll even encourage your customers like, hey, let's just wait till the fall. But in this situation, I feel like Considering the weeds that are here, I can make a significant difference by starting now in the middle of the summer. What are the weeds we're dealing with? Well, there are a lot of them. This is a huge patch of Lespedeza. And you can see it's, it's just kind of matted up, taken over. Now there's plenty of Bermuda grass here. He's still got white clover hanging around. You got clumps of Dallas grass in this yard. You got crab grass everywhere right here you know no pre-emergent for years uh what else we got i'm sure there's some other weeds you got another terrible one that i hate and this is called broom sedge so a lot of weeds in this yard over here we even got virginia buttonweed virtually impossible to kill got some kind of kalinga right here and there's one area over here where it, it has a little drainage problem stays wet and so you got kalinga in this area got some nut sedge growing up real tall here Probably yellow nut sedge. Let's take a look in the back. Chamber bitter. So more of the same over here. So there's a couple of things that I thought were good about this yard. One is small. Okay, that's helpful to me because it's a problem yard. If this yard was huge, I probably wouldn't take it on. Got this here. I don't know if that's the dichondra, or what you call that. Know, maybe somebody can help me out in the comments. But a lot of a lot of sedge back here as well. So, not my ideal situation. You got thin grass here. I'm even gonna check one more thing while I'm here. I got this new little soil meter thing that I bought off Amazon. I'm gonna stick it in the ground and see what it says as far as a pH reading. All right, so we'll see how well this thing works. I tried it at my own house. You gotta put at least two inches in the ground. Fortunately, it's, I think, maybe two and a half inches. I, uh, it has rained a good bit, so that's helpful. If you look at it, I don't know if you can even see it on the video. I mean, it is very acidic soil on this reading. It's down in between three and four on the gauge. Check it from this side. The, the acidity meter is, is somewhere between three and four. So very acidic soil. That's not great either. All right, so the reason I took this yard on, one, I thought, you know what? If it is a small yard, I can handle a project yard. Okay, I can fix this. But I wanted to have a conversation with a customer before I start on this yard and I said, hey, would you mind if I am aggressive on trying to fix this yard? So I think I can fix your yard, but I need to be aggressive. I'm just telling you what I would do if it was my yard. She said, yeah, that, that's fine. Be, be aggressive, do what you need to do to fix it. So here's what I told her. I said, listen, you got crabgrass in the lawn. I really am not going to be so focused on the crabgrass right now. It's hard to kill in the middle of the summer. You can use these quinclorac products, things like that, but it, it, it's hard to kill right now and it will die out when the weather gets cold. So let's don't worry about the crabgrass. Unfortunately, it's not just covered in crabgrass. There is a decent amount, but it's, it's not the only weed in the yard. What about all the broadleaf weeds and the sedges? I've actually got mixed up in the tank and I think this is what I'm going to use. 
a product called Surge. It's not a product I use a lot, honestly. I, I, I keep it because it's a good uh, dove weed control product from a post-emergent standpoint. Surge will give you some good suppression on your sedges. It'll knock out these broadleaf weeds. So I think by just doing a single application of Surge, I'm gonna knock out the clover. We'll, we'll see what it does on the Lespedeza. I've got some change up mixed up. I could spot treat the Lespedeza if I needed to because I know it's good on Lespedeza. But a lot of the broadleaf weeds and some suppression on the sedges should happen. Uh, control of those should happen with this single application of Surge. So I'm gonna do that. I'm also gonna fertilize. This is an 1819 blend uh, that I get from Harold's. And because we're already in July, I don't need the fertilizer to last that much longer, but I wanna get as quick results as I can. So if I put a heavy application of this 1819 blend on there, should have plenty of time for this Bermuda grass to benefit from that. Now next year, I'll be in a little bit different program. That's normally the blend of fertilizer I'm using on my centipede yards, but I think in this situation, it would be appropriate on this lawn. Now here's the part that's gonna be a little bit tricky and a little bit different. As far as I'm concerned, the best way that I know of to get rid of the Dallas grass and the broom sedge, which are two weeds that oftentimes if a lawn has those in there, I just won't even mess with it. The best way that I know of is use MSMA, which is not labeled for residential lawn. So I don't use that. What do you do if you're not gonna use MSMA on this particular weeds? Well, there's some products that will suppress it and things like that. But if I'm actually trying to kill it, and this is what I talked to the customer about, I said, listen, uh, would you be okay if I spot treat some of these tough weeds with glyphosate? And I said, now doing that, it's going to leave some brown spots in your yard. But I said, honestly, if this was my yard, it's been looking bad for years, and we're going to try to fix it. I believe by doing it right now in the summer that I can kill a lot of these weeds, and before the end of the growing season, that Bermuda grass will already have filled back in and, and covered it back up. You know, if you can do that, let's say you did it in April, well, the grass is going to be slow to recover, but I think doing it in July, I feel very confident in one, killing the weed, but I also feel confident in how fast the Bermuda will fill back in. So thankfully the customer agreed to that process. She said, yeah, that's what you think you need to do to fix it, and let's do it. A plan to fix this yard, okay? I'm just go through it real quick with you. I'm going to spray it with Surge. I got three pints per acre of Surge. That's going to get rid of the broadleaf weeds, going to suppress the sedges. Might have to spot treat the Lespedeza with change up to knock it out. Crabgrass, gonna ignore that basically. Pretend I don't see it, not really, but I just can't deal much with that right now. It, it is a problem, but we can let that die out this winter and put out our pre-emergent next January or February and keep that from coming back. So I'm just gonna have to live with the crabgrass, okay? I know that might not make everybody happy, um, but what about this? gigantic clumps of Dallas grass. That's where the glyphosate comes in. I mean, these things are huge. I'm gonna kill it. It's gonna leave a brown spot in the yard, but I'm gonna fertilize the yard and let the Bermuda grass fill back in so that we can fix the problem and not sit here and spot treat that 12 different times with 12 different products, only to watch it recover and come back. I'm just gonna finish it off. If it was full of it, then you just move on to another yard and do something else. Now, same thing I'm gonna have to do with the broom sedge, but fortunately the broom sedge, it's a lot smaller weed, so you can make little bitty brown spots that are hopefully gonna recover. Again, there's a decent amount of crabgrass in here, but I'm trying to fix this yard and make it right so that next summer she can have a great looking lawn without all these problems. Look at that, gigantic Dallas grass clump. Now I was gonna start this whole process today, but she texted me and said, hey, somebody's coming to mow the grass today. I actually thought that was a good thing. I said, good, because if they mow the grass, I'll be able to probably do a better job spraying the Roundup, the glyphosate, without causing as much damage. If the grass is cut short, it's just a little bit easier to do that. And then once I do that application, then it starts with kind of the regular program, what I'm normally doing. So I would come back in the fall, I'm gonna put my fall pre-emergent now. I'm gonna spray Spectacle Flow and put out some uh, mix with Simazine, mixed with 2,4-D and try to get ahead of any cool season weed that might germinate in this lawn. Because again, no pre-emergent on this lawn in years probably. So if I do in that, I'm gonna be looking way better next spring than I would have without that then. In November is typically when we're gonna put out lime. Now probably 
it would be beneficial to go ahead and put out the line considering that the pH reading I got was so low. Uh, and maybe I will do that, I don't know. But if I wait till the winter, then in this is kind of situation where I might double or even triple the rate of the lime because the pH is low and this yard probably has not had any lime on it, either in years or possibly ever. And by September, hopefully the brown spots have recovered. We got a decent looking lawn that's still gonna have crabgrass that'll be dying out soon. And then next year, January, February, we put our pre-emergent out, our pro diamine. We keep the crabgrass from coming back next year. We've got most of the big, clumpy, grassy weeds cleared out. If there's any left, I can hammer them over the winter time. Next year, we have a much cleaner slate to start with, but I think we can solve a lot of these problems this year before the time runs out. The mowing guy's actually pulling up right now in the trailer, so this video is about to wrap up. Thanks for watching the video. I'm Jason Creel. We're going to get started transforming this yard.